Uh, today I want to talk to you a little bit about one of the pet peeves I have being in the industry that I'm in. It's called muscle stimulation. Here's my pet peeve. People go up and look for a TENS unit. A TENS unit is used for pain. Now, you can use it for other things. Let me tell you what a TENS unit basically is not used for. It's not used for muscle stimulation. But what a lot of the manufacturers will say is you can buy my TENS unit and it is also a muscle stimulator. The only thing they're really saying is if you turn the power up enough, you can get a twitching. Well, there's very few situations where a little twitching because you got so much power is beneficial. But to market their TENS units, they will call it a TENS muscle stimulator. I wanted to clear, clean the air up once and for all, hopefully, uh, for those of you that are seeing this video on what exactly is a muscle stimulator and why do you have it. A TENS unit, anybody advertising to you that their TENS unit does muscle stimulation, my first advice to you is run because it may be a good unit, but they're not doing the right thing by educating the customer as to what's going on. A muscle stimulator is also called a functional electrical stimulator. What does that mean? It's called FES, functional electrical stimulation, muscle stimulation. If you've got a patient that's had a stroke, Let's say the patient, they still have the ability to close their hand to pick something up. The problem is it's been lost. There's been some type of damage. And our body will work hard to learn new ways to do things. The reason we use a muscle stimulator is to stimulate groups of muscles after we're trying to do something. We're re-educating our brain as to ways to accomplish tasks. One of the things that would happen is if you had a TENS unit doing a muscle stimulation and you say, okay, do a muscle stimulation. Literally, this is what would happen. Whoa, that's not what you're trying to do. What you're trying to do is you want to teach a person, you've got a whole bunch of different muscles here. You tell the person, I want you to pick that up. Well, look at the way you pick something up. You close your fingers, you turn, you wrist, you grab. You slowly bring it up. An example of it is a cup of coffee. Just trying to drink a cup of coffee. You, you restore function. That's what a muscle stimulator is about. You can't just turn electricity on. Just so you know it from a physiological basis, and this is something to be concerned with. Uh, I wanna, I'll show you another unit here. I'll, I'll just explain it to you. This unit, has the ability, this is a, a, a very unique unit, it's actually not made anymore. But this unit, I can actually, in the way I found out about it was a World Congress of Physical Therapy many years ago, 15 years ago, came out of uh, uh, Denmark. This particular unit here, I can actually walk up to you and it has biofeedback so it can sense electrical changes. But I could literally walk up to you and say, pretend I'm gonna throw you a baseball. And just when I tell you to pretend, Immediately, there is a, a change of the electrical discharge pattern down, and if you're right-handed, coming down your brain, and it would go over to your arm to say, get ready to catch a baseball. That little change, this machine would pick up. And then what would happen is it would stimulate. The muscle stem would come out. Boom. It would stimulate you, the motor nerves, the muscle nerves, to do the necessary things to catch a baseball. Really unique. It's never worked in the United States. It's never been hard because muscle stimulation is just not something that's really reimbursable that easy. Another thing I wanted to show you, when you're doing muscle stimulation, this is the standard unit that is used as a muscle stimulator. You have little buttons where you can have what we call rise time, hold it, fall time. The reason for that is if you have rise time, hold it, you don't want the machine to turn off, then you'd get that. That's not good for the patient. You slowly decrease it. Now, some of these units, example those that use a nine volt battery, this is not a lot of energy. So if you're stimulating, say the thighs, you're stimulating large muscle groups, there's probably not enough energy in here to effectively stimulate that. Now, you also use muscle stimulators, just so I make it clear, you, when you have somebody that's been 
that's active and then getting a cast and you're trying to retard some of what we call atrophy, you may put the unit on turn on several times a day just to try to keep the blood pumping to make the rehab time shorter. But you have to have enough power to effectively stimulate the motor nerves. Now, what goes on with that is uh, you would have a patient that, and I know big muscles, little muscles, women uh, that are smaller, light skin, dark skin, all of those things affect electrical stimulation. The basic rule of thumb is when you're trying to stimulate a muscle, one of the things you want to do is where the motor nerve is, when the electricity gets there, it needs to be close to 300 microseconds. That just means 300 millionths of a second. All I'm saying is the machine needs to stay on hitting that nerve for about 300 millionths of a second. Now here's the problem. Some units, some of these, when they enter the skin, they're only on 250, 300 microseconds. That's upon entry. The skin's a resistor. If it starts off there, by the time it gets down to the nerve, it's only that, that long. If you don't have enough power, you can't stimulate a muscle. Now, and it has to be a functional stimulation, not just something to make a muscle jump. So one of the things that does happen is when we're dealing with quads, when we're dealing with larger muscle groups, we make sure we have a, you have to have enough energy to stimulate. Now, as a result of that, that's why we pay attention to what you're trying to do. One of the most important things you can possibly do in most stimulation, muscle stimulation things, is it's not so important to go for an hour at a time. It's more important to go for 10 minutes of working and trying to relearn. What we're really doing in most situations with muscle stimulation is we're trying to re-educate, reteach the brain ways to accomplish tasks that are functional. So the correct name for muscle stimulator is a functional electrical stimulator. But anyway, I just wanted to give you some hints and just break the ice a little bit on what muscle stimulation is and make sure you're not misled thinking you're buying a machine to use for pain and somebody tells you, oh, but it'll do muscle stimulation. Totally irrelevant for what you're trying to do. Thanks for watching.